I'm Catherine Ross, and I'm here live from the NYSE with Jim Kramer. Jim, let's kick it off by going unfiltered. What's on the top of your mind? Well, I, I am very focused on Warren versus Trump. Now, I know that Biden is the front runner uh, in the Democratic Party, but Warren is talking about taxing rich in order to be able to help the worker. And uh, the president's talking about taxing China to help the worker. And they seem to have uh, both want to have the worker get a bigger piece of the pie. Warren believes that the president may want to help the worker, but the collateral damage is the rich do better. Uh, and I can tell you that uh, with Warren, the rich do worse. Uh, I feel very blessed. If I have to pay more taxes, I pay more taxes. That's top of mind. Is, and I don't think it's going to be the last time that you hear Trump versus Warren. I think it's an interesting debate. Now, I do also want to bring up T-Bone Pickens, who unfortunately uh, passed away yesterday at the age of 91. What did he mean to you, Jim? Well, I, I first met Boone. I shook his hand in 1984 when he was a corporate raider, uh, and he shook things up, and that was considered to be by most heresy because it was trying to make a quick buck, and he would come back and say, look, I made a lot of money. I mean, but as he advanced in age, he began to be a tremendous proselytizer for energy independence. Now, he thought it would be done through natural gas. Uh, natural, so did uh, uh, so Robert McClendon. Uh, and he would be, uh, you wanted to talk about oil, you want to talk about natural gas. You would get a call from Boone if you had just talked about it. And Boone would say, you know, Jim, I, I watched the show last night, and wow, that was just magnificent. Uh, I'd like to come on, I'd like to do booyah. I mean, he always had a smile on his face. I mean, one time I said, look, I, I'm doing a thing in the Bakken. This was eight years ago. I'm, I, I'm, I'm talking about how the Bakken's going to end up being big, and no one thought the Bakken was going to be big. And he said, I'll be there. I said, well, you don't, I, I, you don't know when it is. He goes, I'll be there. And so I, we, we go, and he said, I'll be there, and I, I, I don't see him. And I'm just getting, oh, my God, like, oh, geez, I've been pushing this and pushing this and promoting and promoting. And then I'd say maybe 15 minutes before I film, I see this helicopter coming down and lands maybe at where the other end exchanges. Boom, bounds out. He bounds out. He says, Mike me, I'm ready. And then proceeded to give us a tutorial on uh, what's going to happen with oil and gas in this country. Now, he wanted the government to be more pro, but it turned out you didn't need the government because American ingenuity was great. But I could not stop laughing. And, and he then was just going off on all the other oil men. And he was unstoppably funny. I mean, an irony. I, he has such a mind. And it was, such, it was pure joy. And I remember always my father would call me after. He's just, wow, that guy's as sharp as a tack. And he was sharp as a tack. And uh, I'm so, uh, I was so proud that he liked our show and that he would come in to see me. And he would help me very much and inform me about oil and gas. And, uh, he was he was an American original, and by the way, he he gave a huge amount of money to Oklahoma education, Oklahoma State. You'd have to pry that out of him. He, he, he didn't believe in talking about it. He didn't think that was right. He just did it. Uh, he was doing a corporate philanthropy long before anybody else, uh, and just a twinkle in the eye, fantastic guy. I remember I sat next to him at the White House Correspondents Dinner, and. You know, he was not political. He just would have tremendous jokes about everybody. He never lost his sense of humor advanced as he advanced in age. Uh, and you just don't see a lot of corporate people be freewheeling and say their mind. But boy, did he ever turn out to be right about energy independence. People would have laughed and they were laughing about it. They never thought we'd get there. And we got there. Now, Jim, I do want to talk about the U.S.-China trade war because President Trump tweeted out last night that he's putting a 15-day delay on the October 1st tariffs. Now, you noted in your Real Money column this morning that this gesture of goodwill, um, this is going to make China need to make a move of its own in order the to Chinese keep these... Chinese immediately did the wrong thing. Chinese immediately this morning said they wanted to limit the discussions to trade. Well, what are they... Chinese leaders, listen to me. Um, unless you're doing it on purpose, that's exactly the opposite message that the president wanted uh, in relation to uh, his reprieve. The president has long ago given up on appeasing the farmers. That was at the beginning of this. Before this got very ideological, that would have been fine. It was like, you know, put a tariff on, Chinese take tariffs down, beginning discussion. 
They've been in the president's face saying everything wrong. Mainstream media continues to support the communist Chinese. Don't realize, mainstream media doesn't realize this is a direct slap in the face of the president uh, right after his 15 day. What they want is a wide open, what the president wants is a wide open discussion on everything from fentanyl to intellectual property, uh, military. And here they come through and say, listen, we want to talk, you know, they basically say we want to talk pork and soy. Misreading the president again. But the mainstream media keeps thinking that they have the upper hand. I'll tell you what's really interesting. What was the nadir of uh, trade talks? Well, it was when uh, the president put the, this last tariff on. And then the next day he said he had a constructive conversation with the Chinese. Mainstream media said they never occurred. Well, if they never occurred, why was that the nadir? It's been up ever since. But this was a direct uh, wrong call by the Chinese. Uh, and it's perceived as being uh, neutral by the, U by the U.S. media. The U.S. Me I don't want to say they're in the pocket of the communist Chinese, but holy cow, I long for the media of old. We saw through what the communists wanted to do. We also got a news dump yesterday from Oracle. We got earnings a day early, and then we also heard that co-CEO Mark Hurd was stepping down for a medical leave of absence. I mean, they did, what, 14% non-gap growth. They bought back again. They just keep buying back. They had some good cloud growth. Uh, they had a big win, McDonald's versus Workday. I'm double-checking that. They, uh, some people felt that uh, the deferred revenue was too low. But the stock's getting hit, I think. Not, the stock ran, by the way. It's understand each other. The stock ran. Uh, but I think it's getting hit because uh, Mark Hurd, whom I know very, very well for many, many years, is a very compelling salesperson. I mean, I can imagine if you are an Oracle client and your contract is up and you're trying to figure out whether to switch to Workday, boy, will he ever be in your face? And he's very compelling. So uh, it would be a, a big loss for the company if he were to resign. Big. But why release this news 24 hours before you already scheduled it? Well, because I think that they felt that this is a disclosable issue. Uh, Larry Ellison, who has never walked away from the company, is really amazing. And I, I once criticized Larry. I felt that he had Oracle as time had gone past. And that was a mistake. Uh, he is a visionary. He's a tough guy. He does a lot of stuff. He's in his mid-70s. He sees the cloud. He talks about how the cloud offering they have is, is the best. I, I would certainly dispute that, but I would never dispute the fact that he too is an American original. And he's built an amazing company that still continues to win a lot of business. So uh, the stock, if the stock had not run, uh, and if Mark Hurd, uh, we get this uh, hopefully not tragic news about Mark Hurd, uh, then I think the stock would be okay. It would be up or down a dollar. Uh, but Mark Hurd is uh, the heart and soul now. And Larry was very, on, you know, he's on the call, he always is on the call, but uh, Mark's a better spokesperson for the cloud than Larry is. And Jim, you've got a full plate <laughs> scheduled for today. Right after this, we're going back to the office, we're heading into the studio, we're going to film Bill Market Fantasy at 10.45 a.m. I have Godwin going tonight. Uh, Bill Market Fantasy is the most fun thing I do. You and I are both involved in it, and we sit there and think about, well, you know, give your idea, because it was such a good tell people what you want to do. So I was talking to Bill Enright, who's also on the show with us, and I, we were talking about doing IPOs as players. So we get right. the rookie players, we get the IPOs. So we're brainstorming that segment, which I think will be a right. lot of and fun. And we're going to do a lot of, uh, again, similar, these synergies are really all, uh, amazing. I'm going to talk about chasing, uh, just like I don't like to chase in stocks, but I'm willing to chase in fantasy. Uh-huh. Got to learn that lesson of trying to go after what's hot and what's not. I, I am also going to talk about superstition. Uh, and how that has always been the bane of my trading in, in stocks, and it's the bane of my trading in, in fantasy. And there's just a lot of overlap, and it's really fun. And I urge you, if you're at all interested in fantasy, I'm going to tell you, it is the most informative in the end, and you can boil it down. Uh, bull market fantasy will tell you what to do. And I would, I, I've made a couple of moves just in the beginning uh, since I've been working with Bill Enright, and the moves have really panned out, and he is an expert, so go to it. And we'll also have a segment called Stocks versus Stats, which I'm yes. so excited yeah, to unveil. It's going to be fantastic. I, I don't know. I mean, this is a new one, and it's always exciting. Don't know what Bill's going to throw at us. All right. And then right after that, at 11.45 a.m., you've got your Action Alerts yeah, Plus members-only call. You know, I was up late and up early uh, because this call is so important to me. Uh, got some new rules, uh, some uh, insights that are negative of me, critical. Uh, then we'll uh, do our own fantasy draft of what you want to own now and answer your questions. Uh, talk about a new name and it is uh, again 
my wife said to me, Jim, what the heck? Why are you working harder at this age than you ever have? And it's because of you. And you're having fun. Yep. So guys, 10.45 a.m., head over to bullmarketfantasy.com. 11.45 a.m., go over to actionalertsplus.com and sign up for a free trial to watch him live as he breaks down what you need to know about this volatile market. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me. And of course, Jim, thanks so much for joining us. I'm Catherine Ross, and we'll see you tomorrow.